Hello, I'm Liling, the last author on the paper from Rakuten. Firstly, I'd like to apologize for not being able to make it to the conference in person due to some unforeseen circumstances. I'm presenting the joint work with Maggie and Stanley from National University of Singapore entitled Don't Classify, Translate. We first introduce the task of product categorization in the industrial setting, then provide a brief literature review on traditional classification method and the proposed idea of using machine translation system to solve the product categorization problem. Then we go through the experimental setup to test the machine translation systems against the state of art classification system. Lastly, we will present the results and the conclusion from our experiment. Product categorization is a critical component on e-commerce platform that enables the organization and retrieval of relevant products. Every product is assigned to one of the multi-level categories in a predefined taxonomy tree. This is an example of the Rakuten e-commerce homepage. On the left, we will see the broad product category. And if you enlarge it, <clears throat> and we navigate to the one of the top level category we will see the subsequent levels in orange and the third level in black. Moving on to some literature review. Before the deep learning tsunami in natural language processing, support vector machine was the state of art classification method. UNL explored different word level features with SVM. So Chen and Warren had an interesting work. By injecting business sense into the model, <clears throat> they forced the SVM objective function to converge towards a minimizing average revenue loss based on the predicted categories. A product with lower revenue <coughs> sorry, that was wrongly classified costs less than a product that generates higher revenue and vice versa for rewards in the optimization process. The first usage of deep learning comes from Coursera using n-gram topic models and word embeddings as the feature for classification. For improved features advances the state of art, Shen et al. and Das et al. showed that stepwise classifier improved the performance of the product categorization system. A first level classifier is built to predict the top level category, and one classifier per second level is built to predict the next level and so on and so forth until a predefined depth of levels. Most recently, Ha et al, Kaviye Murakame, and Sia et al uses deep learning to produce vector representation of the product to classify the product. The classifier is simply a final layer of neural network with a softmax across all probabilities based on the vector representation of each product. So for machine translation, it wrote the wave of the deep learning improvements and the state of art machine translations are now built on neural nets. The fundamental building block of neural machine translation are made up of word embeddings, feed forward networks, and gated recurrent neural nets. Word embeddings provide a vectorial representation of individual word units in the text. Unlike count-based language models that heavily depends on smoothing to elevate data sparsity, the probability distribution of word embeddings are continuous and thus inherently smooth. Feedforward network, activation function, and backpropagation form the basis of modern deep learning network, where connections between the hidden layers in the neural net learn contextual features, and deeper layers usually learn more abstract features. Recurrent neural networks is likened to the Markov models that passes through a sequence, and in the context of machine translation, a sequence of word unit in a state-wise manner. Unlike the Markovian limitation of enforcing a fixed size history, RNN is able to learn complex features passing the hidden layers from state to state. Often, gated mechanisms like the long short term memory, LSTM, and the gated recurrent unit, GRU, are used to control the information flow between the states so that the hidden states don't forget the information from the word at a distant history. Potentially, if we unroll the RNN, we have a massive infinite feedforward network that can learn infinite number of connected hidden layers, making RNN more expressive than fully connected feedforward network.
So the encoder and decoder model is also called the sequence to sequence model. It learns to compress the information from the input and generate the output in a state-wise manner. So the um, encoder, after encoding the input sequence into a fixed size embedding on the green, the light green side, the decoder will take the output of the last light green box and generate the first dark green box to produce the first possible word in the output sequence. And this prediction will continue in a state-wise manner until the last, um, until the end of sentence symbol is produced. Initially, neural machine translation faces the problem of losing focus when the target sentence that needs to be generated is longer than 20 words. But now 2015 introduced attention mechanism that feeds the word embedding input to every generated state before generating the next probable word in the target sequence. The attention mechanism forces an alignment of the predicted word in the target sequence to one or more words in the input sequence. So a couple of years ago, the gated recurrent network architecture used with attention produces the state-of-art results in machine translation consistently. Last year, Vaswani et al. 2017 introduced the attention is all you need architecture that uses self-attention to associate each word in the input with every other word in the input without iterating through the input sequence in a state-wise manner. It is also known as the transformer network. More details on the literature review on product categorization and machine translation are described in the papers. Now you ask, why use machine translation instead of classification? We present the advantages of using a machine translation system in an e-commerce setting. Firstly, large e-commerce companies have already invested heavily in machine translation to aid cross-border trading. Reusing the MT engine for product categorization directly reduces the maintenance cost and the technical debt of maintaining and improving one system instead of two. Secondly, although classification is a well-explored machine learning problem, the upper bound limit of state-of-art system has seldom, exceed, has seldom been exceeded significantly, whereas neural machine translation has recently been achieving human-like um, outputs. Third, machine translation has always been resilient to variation and noise. Like natural text and translation, the same product can be referred to with various different product titles. Finally, we found that by generating the hierarchical categories as a sequence, the model is able to generate new product category that isn't, fixed in, that isn't in the fixed taxonomy. To illustrate the last point, we present a product category on a tree branch. The red node represents the top level category, the blue the second level, the green the third level, the purple the fourth level, and orange the fifth. Although the existing taxonomy is fixed on a presented structure, the machine translation model can make predictions that add new age to the model like this. The pancake and waffle mix node could have been easily classified under the breakfast category, which the machine translation did. These novel ages provide suggestion to optimize the taxonomy and potentially changing the simplistic tree categorization structure to a directed graph. Now we present the experimental setup to test the machine translation against state-of-art neural net based classification system on two data sets. We evaluate our system using two open data sets, one from the Rakuten Data Challenge, RDC data set, recently used in a SIG IR set, uh, shared task. And the next is the Rakuten Ichiba data set that was previously used in evaluating baseline system that we will be comparing against. The RDC data in, is in English, and it comes from the rakuten.com site, while the Ichiba data is in Japanese, and it is used for the Japanese domestic market from the rakuten.co.jp site. The RDC data contains 800,000 product titles, while the Ichiba data set contains 100 million product titles. There are 14 first level categories in the RDC data set, and the total number of unique categories adds up to 3,008. For the Ichiba data set, there are 35 level categories, and there are 21,000 plus unique categories 
in the last level. We tokenize the RDC data set with the Moses tokenizer and we lowercase the inputs. And as for the Ichiba data set, we tokenize it using Mikat. We split the data into train validation and test set in a stratified manner. 80% for train, 10% for validation, and 10% for test. So as a baseline, we compare our systems against Kevin here and Murakame, which uh, presented two systems for large-scale e-commerce product categorization using the Ichiba data set. The first is um, the deep belief net trained layer-wise on constructive divergence. And then the last feed forward layer is trained with the class labels to produce the, the product categories. And the second system is a K nearest neighbor system based on the deep auto encoders trained uh, in an unsupervised manner that produces the vector representation of the product title. The one best nearest neighbor is selected as the predicted category. The hyperparameters for the baseline system were tuned to achieve the best possible error rate based on a held out validation set. We compared our two system with the baseline system. We trained an LSTM with global attention system similar to the one from Learn et al 2015 and a transformer system with self-attention similar to the one from Baswani et al 2017. The hyperparameter differences between the two systems are pre presented on the table. We have 512 for both the input and output embeddings for both systems. For the RNN, we set the hidden size to 1024 and for the transformer, the feed forward network size to 2048. We use a single layer LSTM network and for the transformer, we use six layers. We set the global dropout of 0 0.2 for both systems for regularization. For the transformer, we also set the number of tension hit to eight. In total, the LSTM has seven million parameters while the transformer has 99 million parameters. So Kevier and Murakame used the N-best accuracy as the evaluation metric, while Lin et al. used the weighted S-score. Following Lin et al., we used the weighted S-score as the evaluation metric because it um, distributes the product of the true positive and the S-score per label by its class size. It is better suited for skewed data set like those that we use in our experiment. Now for the results. In all cases, our single model machine translation system outperformed the classification system. For the RDC data set and the Ichiba data set. And when we ensemble the respective classifier and the neural machine translation system, the machine translation ensemble outperformed the classifier ensemble in the RDC data set, and the transformer performs the best in the Ichiba data set. Looking at the data size required to train the model, we split the data set um, in a stratified manner to 20% train data and 70% test data, 40% train data, 50% test data, 60% train and 30% test, 80% train and 10% test, while keeping the validation set fixed at 10% and the same validation set is used for all four experiments. We compare the performance of the ensemble from the deep belief net and K nearest neighbor against our machine translation system as the ensemble of the LSTM and the transformer network. We see that even at 20% training data, our system performed better at 69.58 F-score, weighted F-score, while the classifier performs, uh, drop, performance dropped to 61.27%. So the machine translation system also created novel full category path, a uh, full path categories on the large scale Ichiba data set. And we see that it produced a lot more new path than the RDC data set. 
For example, in the RDC data set for the product How Leonard Neil Young Russ Never Speak Guitar Songbook, um, the goal category is under music sheets, uh, it is under home and outdoors hobby musical instruments, mis miscellaneous accessories, and music sheet. But the transformer output is rather concise and it goes home and outdoor hobbies, miscellaneous accessory, and music sheet without the musical instrument. Although we could easily do some post processing to force the sheet, the music sheet into the musical instrument note, we can also use such prediction to prune and restructure the taxonomy tree more accurately. Another example is when the ensemble models categorizes the Epson workforce inject printer as an electronics instead of office supply, which is interesting. This suggests that the prediction from the neural MT system can be used and reach the representation of the product and creating new ages in the product taxonomy. So um, the printers was never part of the, the printers, scanners, and fax to printers was never part of the electronic top level categories. And traditionally, it's under the office supplies. So, in conclusion, we showed that uh, neural machine translation systems outperform traditional classification system for product categorization. We showed that the neural machine translation system can create new route to leave category path and suggest that the taxonomy can be improved or adapted based on the new categories. And finally, if don't tra classify, just translate especially when you already have a machine translation system in production. So that's all. And if you have any questions, you write us an email and ask away. Thank you. Um, sorry again for not being able to be there in person, but I hope you enjoy the conference. See you.